Okay, so um, Josh, you've just been opt, man. Um, I, I, I wonder if you have uh, fly. Uh, so Josh, double double tap on your uh, on your space bar and see if you can fly. Okay, so uh, so what, which, what what's that command? Web seems to be the fount of all knowledge here, which is not surprising to me. That was a guess. For flying, you can just type slash fly or something like that, and it should come up. It'll tell you that it's enabled. Um. Double jump to yeah. get up in the air and crouch to come back down. Uh, you double jump to activate and deactivate the flight, and then, yeah, as she said, you press shift to, you know, go down. Woohoo! Yay, cool. Wow, that, that's uh, excellent. Uh, yep, we're standing by. We're ready to go, Josh. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Gentlemen, to my Opticon 2. What you're hearing right now is our pre show music. Please sit yourself, uh, make yourself comfortable, and uh, get ready for a great show. Myself in the Diamond Boots Ensemble. We're here to, uh, here to do our thing. And um, we will be out momentarily.
Okay, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Minopticon 2. Minopticon 2 is a real-time 30-minute equine ballet, a theatrical horse dancing performance in the virtual world of Minecraft. Staged at the Cadre Laboratory for New Media Orwell server, the Minopticon performers log in from the U.S., Canada, and Australia to do precision choreography, riding Minecraft horses that are bred specifically for this purpose. In every way, a full-fledged theater production with regular rehearsals, the Minopticon group comes together telepresently in Minecraft while communicating in voice using a chat software popular with video gamers. Divided into three acts, mid-range, long-range, and close work, Minopticon choreography is called in real time by me using a verbal shorthand similar to air traffic control or square dancing. The Minopticon performers are called the Diamond Boots Ensemble. They ride horses based on the classic Lipizzaner stallions used in the 18th century Spanish riding school of Vienna. Lipizzaners appear white, but are actually called greys. The Diamond Boots Ensemble features eight performers. Seven are riding greys, and our 15-year dressage expert, Janine Castle, is riding the ensemble's only bay, which is a brown horse. The Diamond Boots perform to an original score composed by Yagis Mungin from Turkey, a former artist in residence at Ars Virtual and composer of chip music and video game soundtracks. The show's original stage set was constructed by technical director Bill Cruikshank from Australia and is based on the 15th century Spanish fort Castillo de San Marcos in St. Augustine, Florida. High above the stage set is a complex system of redstone circuits, which are the Minecraft equivalent of computer logic, designed by group Bill Cruikshank to create spectacular water drop special effects that occur in between the first and second acts, and again between the second and third acts of the Minopticon program. Minopticon and the Diamond Boots Ensemble debuted the first Minopticon production at Jan Northoff's U in 3D Hackerspace in Berlin in July of 2013. We also uh, had the honor of performing for Avacon exactly eight months ago, and we are delighted to be here again. So I want to thank everybody at Avacon for their hard work, and also thank all, uh, all the Diamond Boots for standing by and for uh, everyone for being here today. And uh, welcome to our virtual audience. Uh, my name is DC Spensley. I am uh, the artistic director of the Minopticon 2 performance, and we're just about to get ready. Here, let me confirm uh, with, uh, with Avacon. You guys are all standing by, everything's ready. Uh, diamond Boots. Uh, give me an R in the window if you're ready, and go. Okay, um, so uh, Josh, I'm ready to go here. So when, when I give you the word, when I start, uh, um, when I say open the hatches, then I think we're going to cue the music there. Okay, Diamond Boots, get ready to take the stage. Wabs, please open the hatches. Yellow and green, when I give you the word, you're going to go uh, pair up and go directly to your P1 position. Okay, so as soon as you get out, you're going to pair up and go yellow and green. And go to your P1 position and go red and blue. Wabs, please close the hatches. Thank you. Okay, Diamond Boots, when I give you the work in a pairs parade to P2 position. And go. First thing we're gonna do is clockwise circle. We're gonna get set for that. And go get set. 
Okay, Diamond Boots, when I give you the work, I'm going to do split pairs crossover maneuver back to your P1 position and go. Give us a firework when you get there. Diamond Boots, when I give you the work, I'm going to do split pairs. You're going to end up at P2 Firework when you do each loop, and go. You guys are going to end up at your P2 position. Diamond boots, when I give you the word, we're going to do split pairs on your own. 
don't call it firework at each loop, end up at P2 position. And go. Okay, we're going to give you the word pair spray to P3 position and go. And this is pirouette signal pod and go pirouette. And go pirouette. Go pirouette. Diamond Boots is going to give you the word of you to advance to P4 positions and go. Josh, this is the beginning of our third act. I'm not sure what the timing is, but uh, I'm going to the third act. And let me know. Okay, we're in our P4 uh, default close dance positions. We're going to do switch sides maneuver, and you're going to, uh, you uh, will remain faced towards the outside. And go switch sides maneuver. And go turn. And go switch sides maneuver. And go turn. And go switch sides. And go turn. And go switch sides. And go turn. You guys are going to get ready for advanced descent maneuver. Give a little room on your left side for your partners, and then trim up nice, face to you know, face in the same directions in the center, and go advanced descent. Trim up nice. Okay, one. So I'm going to give you the word lucky to half pirouette and face red, and go. Great. Starting from yellow, we're going to do a clockwise pirouette. Yeah. 
to their default P4 positions and go. I'm going to give you the word of it, but it's going to do a clockwise pirouette and go. And go to the Firework going down, and go down. Counterclockwise pirouette and go. Go to the Firework going down, and go down. Down to blue standby for square dance to move. Everybody's going to do a clockwise half pirouette to face outside and go. And we're going to do a counterclockwise square dance to begin with. And go. And go. And by turn on and go. Down and go down. Go to the 
Bud. Pirouette. Go. Finale fireworks on down. And go. That's good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being part of Minopticon 2. That's our presentation for today. What we're going to do now is we're going to recognize each one of our uh, our performers here. Uh, so, Josh, and uh, could you land in the, the gold center? Uh, red and blue, please come up and go. And green and yellow, please come up and go. Everybody, please get ready for advanced to center maneuver and go. And when I give you the word, ones are going to turn to a half pirouette and go. Okay, uh, hold on, I'll be right down. I'm going to introduce each one of our performers. So, ladies and gen gentlemen, this is uh, Cordavi, uh, Michael Amundsen in Manhattan, New York City. Sarah Gewertz from Sacramento, California, presently in parts unknown, maybe Florida, maybe who knows. Hi, Sarah. Haifa Tabara, San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. Janine Castle, our dressage consultant and expert riding a bay. And here we go. Kunzai is Ben Unterman, a researcher from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Columbia. Obi-Ron and Onmora from Manhattan, New York City. Elliot Wang from also from the heart of Silicon Valley. And Matt Pita also from the heart of Silicon Valley, San Jose. Ladies and gentlemen, our composer, Maestro Yagus Mungin. And our technical director, Bill Cruikshank, Jesting Rabbit. And our assistant producer, Lawrence Simmons. And ladies and gentlemen, my name is G.C. Spensley, um, artistic director of Minopticon 2. Once again, I'd like to thank the, uh, the team at Abacon for keeping virtual work performance alive and making sure that it thrives, putting their time, their energy, their heart into this. would also like to thank each and every one of the Diamond Boots Ensemble for their hard work. Dead Professor James Morgan, our curator for the Orwell server. Uh, Peter Spangler, one of the admins for the, for the server. And that's all I'm going to do tonight. This is not an Academy Award. So <laughs> thank you guys, uh, our live audience, very much for tuning in for Minopticon 2. And we'll see you next year at Abacon. Thank you very much. Um, so we're all going to leave the stage and uh, yellows and go. And red and blue and go. And go ahead and close the hatches. That's all, folks. Are you racing? Um, would you? Do you think we should? Would you like to have a little race?
Okay, okay ladies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll, maybe we'll have a little horse race here. Um, the um, is uh, anybody in the diamond boots still up for a little horse race here? Uh, I need to get going. Sorry. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna let's let's go over and meet at the at the horse racing area the start and see who's there. Maybe we, um, we'll see. Um, I'm, I'll bring a horse over and then we'll see who else uh, comes by. Sure thing, Josh. I will. And it'll be a few minutes to. Uh, I, I got to go claim a horse and do that kind of stuff. So. Okay, Josh, I'm in the middle of the stage right now. You can follow me. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm going there right now. All right, we have at least one taker here. Anybody else in the diamond boots want to uh, try their hand? Oh, there, there, there's somebody coming here. Vice Yagas, are you gonna are you gonna jump in here? might be a good point to explain how perilous it actually is to be racing your horses. <laughs> that's a good, that's actually a good one. We did this, uh, we opened the show recently um, at uh, simultaneously in San Francisco and in Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, we had uh, a little horse race afterwards. It's a little less, uh, oh, look at those Endermen over there. It's, that's even kind of perilous. Hey, let's go over there and slay those Endermen uh, while, we're, while we're waiting. See if we can get him. <laughs> they, 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 you know, that's really great sound design. Actually, I gotta tell you. Um, Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, besides that little bit of uh, excitement there, um, the uh, these horses are actually bred inside Minecraft. 
Um, and uh, the uh, I, we found them way, way out in a um, in an area and took them 3,000 blocks back to an area, and we actually have to feed them carrots and pair them up to breed the horses that we want for this show. They are they're actually not quite living, but they're living enough within this world. They're alive for this world in uh, um, uh, so, and they can be damaged. Any one of us can be killed or damaged by the bad guys out there, which is why we jumped on those Endermen over there. So, this is not only do we have to eat to survive here, we also have to fight to survive, just like any other artist out there in the world, except there are people literally trying to kill you here in uh, in this uh, in this space. And pie, lots of pie. <laughs> this is uh, okay. This racetrack was designed by Zingo Ra, uh, a, a San Francisco artist. Um, and uh, okay, so so Josh, um, so the um, I guess since you're uh, you're the camera guy, you should you should kick us off here because uh, it would be that would be unfair from for from um, for somebody actually riding in the race to do that. Ready? Go horses, go! Yeah, yeah! That was our first barrier there. Actually, barriers get progressively more and more difficult as we go here. And also, we may even encounter zombies or skeletons that will try to kill us while we're out there. I mean, you know. Giddy up, man. Come on. I feel like California Chrome here in the uh, Belmont Stakes recently. Two out of three ain't bad. This is a good day. Oh my. Does that mean a horse went down? No, uh, there was a baddie right on this, right on the track here. Oh man, Mo, you got a speedy horse. Yeah, no doubt. So, 
That's an interesting thing. Does breeding actually affect horse speed? Is that like a calculated yeah, thing that happens? Yeah, how much they jump. So who was our uh, winner here? Mafia won. I was in second. Ah, congratulations, Lawrence. Um, it does, actually. Breeding does... Um, does affect it, it depends on which kind of horses you start out with it's uh, how hardy they are and how fast they are and that's one of the more arcane aspects of uh of um uh, uh or somewhat realistic too it depends on uh, who the sire is on the horse and it's really hard to tell um who who the stallion and who the mare is in minecraft i haven't figured that one out yet but um what you do is you feed them golden carrots, and they hearts appear over the horses. I, in, I believe they're uh, they're in love when they eat golden carrots, uh, um, and uh, and suddenly a just like in real life, a little baby horse appears. So I don't know that's it how it works. That's how it works. And here I thought Louis was more work than that. <laughs> horses like a bling. <laughs> you do like that. True, true. true, true. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, thanks to the to the uh, virtual audience and to Alcon once again for indulging our little little horse race here. Um, this is easy, especially. I'm going to take off um, and um, probably go out somewhere in not ride a real horse, but hike on some of the trails out here. So uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks for viewing, and we'll talk to you again soon. See you next time. Thank you, DC Spensley, and the rest of the uh, Boots Ensemble. Diamond Boots Ensemble. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.